Okay, hi everybody. Uh, Nephew SIG package management, or uh, SIG automation package management sub project meeting. And uh, let's show the board. Share this window. How did the meeting go yesterday? I haven't had a chance to look at any, um, uh, any, um, recordings or anything so um, yeah we discussed a little bit the status but then they uh Dimitrius presented this uh approach to uh, or to, we started to discuss delegation more to the workload cluster it was like uh i they presented why uh they wanted to do something and I, I suggested to discuss it as part of SIG one, right? To see whether it's whether we is it whether this is part of R two or not. Um, okay. And yeah. so, but yeah, we, it was a bit of an open discussion yesterday. So we okay. discussed a few things. Personally, I think there's a few things we have to do, right? Like the IP address itself. Yeah, there is some because if you scale out uh, a workload. The IPs typically yeah. come locally, right? So what I will, I think the only thing that we should do in specialization potentially is, is create a subnet on which the IPs belong, right? But don't allocate the addition, the individual IPs. Right. Okay. For example, because if you scale out multiple pods, they will get uh, anyhow a different. We have they have to get a different one, and we should not have a dependency to the management cluster for that. I so then we'll run a. Uh, um, IPAM operator as well, or something. Um, how do we? So, no, so, so what you? Of, oh, well, you give a submit and you, you do, locally dole them out. And you delegate it to the, the cluster. Now, the challenge yeah. here is uh, I, when with the multi networking cap, uh, it would be very easy because you basically, on the network itself, you can basically, uh, so yeah. there's a local IPAM who so can basically provision it. Yeah. Today it's a bit. Uh, I mean, probably I, we have to look at how to do it. But uh, and then the the not itself will not get an IP, but says it's IPAM bound, right? And it gets it from I, IPAM. So the changes for us are very minimal to do something like that. It's not very difficult. I think the only thing is how do you delegate that subnet towards the workload cluster so that they can act locally. But uh, so that's the thing that we have to sort out. But uh, I. In the worst case, we can, of course, run a local IPAM instance on the on the workload cluster, right? And we are done. Uh, right. Because yeah. we have that capability to provision the subnet there. So that would be easy. The only thing what we would have to do is add a CNI thing, but I already had a request from two people to do so, <laughs> to, to, to create a CNI, because at the end of the day, <laughs> I, but OK, I will have to talk that. I'm not saying that's the way forward. Uh, but that's I, that's I think something that makes sense in my view. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, so let's go through the board here. We do have a lot more purple over here now. Yay. Um, so, uh, but uh, Sandeep, I think I saw you on the call. Let me. Hi. Hi, John. Can you hear me fine? Yes. Okay. So the. Yeah, so I raised the uh, MRs in uh, splits in parts. So the framework is, uh, yeah, framework <clears throat> MR is raised, but it is not merged yet. So if that is merged, then I can start creating the MRs for uh, individual uh, controllers as part of, I mean, uh, registered with the controller manager. Okay, so you need a review on, on it here. Uh... So we is, split in three. We split in different pieces. One of them is already merged, I think. Uh, something correct? Yeah, one is merged, and the yeah. current one, two zero seven, two zero eight. Full request two zero eight. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I merged that by accident. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. There, it was just the interface one. When I put, I I, I assumed the putting, you know, slash LGTM just meant you know looks good to me, you know. Uh, I know. No, yeah. Oh, but I already have two right? before. Yeah, I already approved, approved as well, by the way. Yeah. So, so slash approve is the one you want to use that 
we can have as many as we want slash LGTM is yeah. the, the, the instruction to merge it. I don't think that's necessarily great terminology, but we're just borrowing what Kubernetes does. And, and so. No, that's fine. Yeah, no, it's just so slash approve. So, so that means sort of, looks, yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, it means this looks fine from my point of view, but other people need to I know, look. that's what yeah. it's, that's yeah. what it's. So suggestion is to use slash approve instead of slash LGTM if you don't want to move. Yeah, slash LGTM should be the last yeah. thing done or only one person does that. So slash approve uh, is is what you use unless you want to merge it. it might merge be no it harm. is slash LGTM. I don't know why they chose to do it that way, but that's how it is. Might be no harm just to push that out to the community. If we'll yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably next, next after our, our one, we can see if there Okay, but this one was you had already improved it. Yeah. With, with, uh, so I think it was fine anyway. It was only really the like, it was yeah. the interface. So okay, two zero eight, John. It's two zero eight. Yeah. Okay. So I'll review that then today. Yeah. yeah. Um. All, all right. Let's move back to the board. So once but, that but, is merged, but, I will create the subsequent PR uh, with the with the reconcilers also registered with the controller. The, the the ones that I did with the token uh, one are already updated uh, in the PR that is open, so it's already Once this aligned with that. Yeah. Okay, cool. No, so that we don't need to wait for two eight to do that merge because I think there is three components. There is, I think we we there is the interface that is merged, right? So which is basically yeah. what all the controllers or the reconcilers have to implement, as well as the operator, right? That's merged. So now I think 208 is what Sandeep did is the operator in the yeah. that uh, uses that interface. So now you have an operator, right? And then what we still have to do is all the individual reconcilers, we have to do an update. So what I was saying is that the token one that is still open, I already updated it to align with that, right? So because it, it was still open. Uh, but then there is others like the specializers have to be updated as well to fit the framework. And that's, those have to still be done. But yeah, it's not a lot of work, but it's just, and we have to go in that sequence because of all the GoMot uh, dependencies. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. Prow will never merge. Uh, or will never, you'll never get through the test framework. Uh, and I think it's a good practice anyhow to split it up. Uh, so. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let's well, let's try and get those things merged. Uh, we'll try and I'll try and review those. We'll try and get them merged in uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, so, so that'll that'll be um. We'll, yeah. We'll be we'll make good progress. Okay. Uh, so this is actually done. Uh, Just one question, John. On that, when we are on the same topic. So two zero two was that deliberately closed, to us, to Sandeep? Yeah. Yeah. So yesterday I did not have that easy CLA thing. And uh, yeah, I, I could have done that slash easy CLA again to get it. I did not know it, so I just closed it and recreated that PR when I registered ah, with okay. that. That was the only okay. reason. I mean, it's the same okay. code in uh, okay. PR. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, okay, this one we, uh, so that one, the UI view emerged. Um, and I have a build out there and uh, I will update the Nephia web UI package to point to that. Um, I, I've got updates to that. I don't have an issue for that. I should probably create one. Um, I guess it's kind of part of that. Um, I believe Ganesh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead, but Ganesh, I think this one's is this one done too? The package variant set viewer is done too, right? That was done in the same uh, PR. Yes, that, that's right, John. Yes, we can both, awesome. both can be marked as done. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Um, I did notice a few little bugs, but we'll raise those separately, but at least we have, we have them there now. Um, and we've got a, a start, it's great that your, that your team's, uh, now like has the flow, it's awesome. Uh, okay, so then going back to the top of the board, uh, installer for enough, do we have any um, discussion here that we need, to, we need to have? I guess getting back to the, what's the, the sort of standard scrum things of like, what are you working on? What's the, we're not going around person to person, we're going through the board, but still what, what are the blockers? 
you know, is there anything you need from anybody here for like this installer one? And do we have an ETA or anything? I don't see Victor, but I don't know, Vish, if you want to discuss. Think, I think there's one PR that is, I think Vish and, and uh, Ravi, I think was asked. I, I approved uh, that one for uh, Victor. So, the, so there is some scripts that he did uh, uh, on that one. It's in, I think, in test infra, I think it's probably the PR as far as I understand. That's right at the top. Maybe it, maybe it must have merged. Is it the PR35? Ah, it's merged now. Okay. Okay. Or is it end-to-end -end, uh, testing? One of the two. Can it, is there a separate ripple for that? I, I forgot. Okay, it looks like the uh, field test power testing. No. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Uh, yeah, then it's merged maybe. There was some Ansible file. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there was something that merged. I don't know. These are rad, rad merged. This is one of vector. For a minute ago. I think uh, there was one merge. Okay, that's not the one, I think. I was looking at that was, one earlier and there wasn't much answer stuff in it. Maybe there is now. I think he's in the creation of Bootstrap. I know it's that one. Yeah. This one, the one you were just pointing at, creation of Bootstrap 35. Ansible role. Yeah, yeah. Yes. 35, that was the one. Oh, two minutes, two minutes ago. ago. Okay. The order yeah. okay. Weird. Yeah. okay. Okay, so what does that mean with respect to that issue? I mean, are we, how close are we? Or what, what, what do I, tell me what to do here. <laughs> Um, do we so okay? I at the moment I'm personally testing uh, the whole thing myself, uh, John. Right? So, okay. the one thing that we still have to, I one of the points that I wanted to bring up today's call is I mean, we have the discussion on the DNS uh, thing, you remember, right? Yeah, so somehow we need to provide access to the management cluster from the other cluster because, conflict, right? If we run uh, Git. Gitia there. So I've been starting to experiment with uh, Metal LB. Okay. So we because need, we have we to, need expose. to expose. Yeah. So we have two choices. One is we can use a, a service load balancer or yeah. uh, we can use an external IP and just hack it. So there's an external IP. You can, you could just, if, if the node well, don't we, if the, right now we're already, I thought we said it already works because it's on the Docker bridge. No, so wait a minute. So I, at the moment, my, all my tests so far has been with, uh, with the management cluster itself, right? So I can uh, get access to it. What I've not tested yet is uh, uh, getting access from a kind cluster we spin up to that management cluster because okay. Uh, there is no external, I, I, there's no IP exposed uh, from there. I, so what did I do yesterday is I created Metal, uh, so Metal LB basically is a very low weight uh, or lightweight load balancer. So you're basically just giving the IP of the Docker bridge. So I basically split up the, the subnet into pieces and I gave it an IP and I, that worked for me. I just okay. wanted okay. to see if uh, this is the way forward or not, uh, because, okay, I just started to experiment by myself. So I don't know whether anyone had uh, done something or had uh, worked on this page. Uh, we, I, I did a similar uh, process that you did. And okay. yeah, I'm in favor of okay. uh, Metal LV. Okay, but then we, I can share the script that I used uh, because it's, uh, it's very easy actually. Okay, then, so uh, that means we could. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry to, just trying to keep it. So, so what we're saying is, is our you know standard to Kubernetes practice would be that if Gitea is running in this cluster and we want the workload clusters to be able to access it, we create a service, load balancer service, that and we can we can serve it externally then, and we're saying we're going yeah. we're going to just follow that practice and in order to do that and have our test framework and our infra our sandbox environment work we need to use metal lb you know when i'm running it i run my cluster actually in gke my management cluster 
So I could just spin up that, and well, I, I may not use Gatia, but, but if I'm using Gatia locally there, then I can spin that up and I can get everything to work still because I just have to now be able to expose, take that load balancer IP and yep. patch it into the config sync, root sync on the workload cluster. Is that right? See, ideally what I, what I would love to to have done is we have to set up a DNS infrastructure that leverages that IP, right? Uh, then we all yeah. do it by a DNS and we are IP. The only thing what we have to do is in the DNS, uh, refer to that IP and then all the rest just use DNS names and, and that's it. So, so if we have more than one service, then we can do that. You, you still have to do this bootstrapping at the IP level for the DNS itself, but we can- For sure, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we can do, we can run a, a, we can we can we can add the uh, the external. The simplest thing to do, there's a if we're using load balancer services, there's a, a plugin for Core DNS that will expose those on a zone, and then we can um, configure the workload cluster DNSs to point to the management to that DNS instance running in the management cluster as an upstream for that zone. Yep, um, and then. But that means uh, we still need to plumb the core DNS instances on the workload clusters with, you know, with that configuration. Mm -hmm. But so, would that that would allow us to? Uh, then the only thing we are depending upon is the DNS infrastructure that uh, has to be set up, right? And I believe okay, there's various ways to do that, right? And we can just select one for now. Because right, that's then, that would be the yeah. DNS infrastructure. Yeah, would be yes. Yeah. So, so in um, okay, we can we can take that offline if we want to go that path. Uh, you know that that that's fine. It's just a little more work. And um, so, right now, as far as I know, there's only one service, which is the um, the Gatia, which we need to access that way. And we need to do it because we're running the Gitia in the management cluster, as opposed to using a different Git provider. So that's where I'm like, what, what, what strictly speaking, it shouldn't be necessary to do all that. So that's kind of part of our test infrastructure setup, as opposed in our in our sandbox setup, as opposed to part of Core Nephew installation. Core Nephew installation doesn't need that per se. I know right now our our Cluster yeah. infrastructure management is, I believe, assuming. Are we assuming Gitia right now? That's all we're. It's all we're supporting, or are we going to support other, like GitHub or anything? In your token, your token controller, right, was for Gitty right now, and and your repo controller was for Gitty, and that's fine. And we could. That's that, that's all yes. we need to demonstrate the, the principle. I'm just wanting trying to understand the framework. Yeah, so yeah, I would love to do the others, right? Uh, to be honest, the the okay. only thing what we have to discuss a little bit the approach on how we we do that, right? Because I for me, I maybe yeah. After we are done with our one, I, or once our okay. one is That's out right. of the we board, talked about this. Let's our one. Yeah, let, you know, let's uh, then see how we can make it generic. And I don't think it's a lot of work, but I would like I discuss a few options. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's. All right. So then. Then. Okay. So. So if 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 everybody feels that there's capacity to to do that, let's 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 keep working on that. Um, I don't know if we want to create additional issues like around the DNS side, around the metal LB side, and around uh, in our in our. Well, yeah. Um, whether we have to do anything more for workload cluster to management cluster networking, or we just rely on the Docker bridge because it's all in one machine right now. Um, yeah. It might be helpful as you work on those things to create issues is what I'm saying, so that we can track them here, but. Yeah. Um, so Victor, I'll, is it okay that you, I, so I'll send my work, my metal LB stuff that I did to you so far, right? So we can have a look, right? And yeah. then we have to create a metal LB package, right? Uh, out of it, right? That's what we should do. And then the DNS, Okay, I don't know because tomorrow actually I have a day off. So the, the problem is tomorrow I cannot work on it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can take a look and, and I can 
uh, add the, the, the changes so to, to, to start testing that. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, I think I saw it. This is out there. Yeah, okay, you've got a link. So that just needs review. Uh, this yeah, one that's we submitted. Uh, yeah. We're going to wait on this one until we're a little further along. Uh, Liam. Yeah, I um, kind of have made a start on this, but I, 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 I still have to, uh, not fully clear on what needs to be done here, I have to admit. Uh, right. So, um, I mean, you know, the upload packages, where are they? And what's the downstreams? Yeah, the relationships here between the package variant set, uh, what the, they, they, will they generate package variants then that are included in this package, or how does that work? Or am yeah, I completely confused here? I think this is, right, it's, yeah, it, it gets, it, it's hard to split this task out, I think, from the stuff that, that we would I, I had kind of a mad idea here, and uh, I probably regret volunteering for this, but uh, I, I thought maybe a how nephew works kind of document or not not architecture, but more of a what all the moving parts are. You know, like I know Vim did uh, did some some uh, some diagrams there, but uh, I was thinking I think... maybe doing something like that so that you know where does you know. Where, where does Gitea fit in? Where does Porch fit in? Where does Config Sync fit in? What's I, happening I in each stage? Yeah, Wait, maybe, yeah. If you want, if that that might be that might be a, a place to start. Like, because like I think this this particular issue you, you volunteer for, it's kind of hard because it, it it's sort of like so dependent and, and coupled with the, the work that Wim's doing that it's it's kind of hard to split out to one one separate person. Yeah. So, but it's good. You, it's it's good for me too though because I have to learn the thing to to, to do this. Uh, yeah. But if and I don't want to hold the thing up either now. So well, yeah. well why don't we do this? Um how about you take the action to to take sort of what you've learned out of that process and try to document it. Yeah. And then and then we can iterate on that document to like you know and then and then maybe um, when you get when you get to the point then where where this needs to be done, or if uh, you know, if, if, if well, I think we can we'll, get we'll assign this to, to, to Wim right now because it's kind of yeah, in here yeah. to what he's working on, and then, yeah. um, and then, um, but but like, I think I think your suggestion's good. Like, let's let's document try to try to document it. Um, you know, when 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 you're building something, you have it in your head, and sometimes it's hard to communicate. So having somebody else try to like. Yeah, that's precisely the fact that it might be um, what seems obvious to someone uh, who's in the middle of building something. Exactly. Maybe isn't so obvious to somebody who's kind of outside looking in. Yeah. It, 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 exactly. And then so it can be super helpful in that communication to, to, to kind of go through that process. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, right. Then uh, this one I think need, just needs review. Well, we just, did we just merge this? Okay. The bootstrap is merged, but there is another one. The token is not merged, but I think I addressed everything and I also rebase. So it's, I think the token should also be ready. Yeah, token. Uh, yeah, I merged the bootstrap yesterday because I seen one approval there from John. And then the, I did the, so the token, I think there was some comments from John. Was, are they all taken care of him? Yes. Yeah. And see, the, the main open point was that there were some Nokia I, or I had some IPAM. Uh, things, but the bootstrap one has or had merged or had all these methods uh, in it. So I have updated the token one to refer to the bootstrap okay. method. So all of these dependencies now are, are all local to Nephew. So there is no other dependency. Uh, that was, I think, plus I think for the Git thing. Yeah. yeah, that was the, the, the main open issue. Yeah. And then I did a small, I, so I did one more update uh, uh, one or two hours ago to align with what uh, uh, Sandeep is doing, right? So because so I aligned that. And then uh, what I also did is, and that I still have to test, but so what I learned through the process when we were doing this second variant, uh, this uh, secret with, with ports, so my issues, so they all have to do with the token. So what you see is in Gitia, 
in Gitty, uh, there is, so you can only create an access token and no scopes. And so there is a latest version of Gitty that allows you to set it. And I believe that's the one that we need to make that access token writable in Gitty, right? And I imported that library. So, so they oh, now have so a- Gitty didn't allow writable access tokens before or something? So the latest Go SDK, uh, does not have any way to configure uh, access rights on a token. So you get a token and you can create a token and that's it. But so the UI of Kitty has that option. Uh, wow. And what I saw in the SDK, the, the main SDK has it, but the, the official tagged one has not. So I now also included that. So I'll still need to test it, but I already updated it to include it. Uh, if that doesn't work, we have to fall back to some uh, to maybe use any password or something like that. But uh, yeah, so but so these are the three things that I changed from uh, last night. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll review. Uh, it looks like I've got a few reviews to do, and then a bunch of these will resolve. Um, and. Steven, is Steven here? He, I have my list. Don't see him here. Okay, I, I, I'll sync up with him, but I'm pretty concerned we haven't seen, I don't think we've seen a um, PR there yet. So I'm not sure what's happening, but I think worst case we ship with just package variants and package variant set. And um, so, uh, I think uh, Ganesh, uh, so I've been thinking about the UI. Um, Ganesh, do, do you have yes, a second? Yeah. Um, so there's a few things. Let me, yeah, I can, I can actually show. Oh, wrong machine. I have to. Let me, I'm going to join the meeting. Oh, um, uh, I have to minimize all these things that people shouldn't see. Just a second. Um, all right. Stop sharing that. So, um, sorry, I'm moving off the board now. I think we're basically we basically done with it. I wanted to discuss a little bit about. Um, what, do you have an idea of what the capacity of the UI team is to to um, are you, you're seeing the UI now. Um, so here's an instance of the UI I have. I've registered a whole bunch of repositories to it. Um, there's no actual clusters behind these, by the way. This, so it's really kind of just for, for, uh, for exercising the, the management cluster side of things. Uh -huh. But um, I, I think there's some things that could be pretty useful. So as we go and um, we talk about like right now I can go in, um, like we could make this more navigable for one, but um, if I go in and open up one of these, you'll see there's the package. Um, oops, that's the wrong, this is the output. Oh, so I didn't do it as a package. Um, so, so, Here we have, I think this is where like you had your examples. Yeah. So the viewer should be running in here. Um, yeah, so like target one, target two. So so this is a viewer in, um, in you know, for in, in package resource. Um, so, right, I'm looking at a particular package. I can look at that resource. Now, the thing is when I apply this package to the management cluster, I can do that. And I end up with, you know, a package variant set running in the cluster. And it would be great to be able to, to go and have a, like go into, I don't know if we need a different tab here. We talked about the idea of there being a different tab here for nephew specific stuff. This would still be, if we stick with package variant, package variant set, it doesn't need to be in a different tab, but it might be nice to have like a, something that shows us like, 
even another tab here that says something like, you know, uh, uh, package variant sets or package variants, or I don't know how we want to, or deployed. Uh, yeah. I, in the in the workshop, we had something called a button here that said deploy packages across clusters, right? And manage 5G topologies. And then you went to it and it showed you a screen. I don't unfortunately have a, an old version of the UI up and running, but and you could sort of see things that was actually not reading from packages, but it was reading from the cluster directly and saying, hey, here's a, here's a, you know, we, we can say, here's the package variant sets that are actually deployed in your cluster. And then you could, you could see, oh, if you, if you click on one of those, you can say, oh, here's, here's the package variant set. Here's a header with some information about it. And then um, underneath, there's a list of all the package variants that came out of that package variant set. You know, which you could then drill in, right? So you could kind of navigate this tree structure. We have a tree structure where you have a package variant set. It generates a list of package variants, and each of those package variants generates package revisions. And so that sort of tree structure you could navigate through the UI. So I don't know if it's an R1 thing, and it all depends on the capacity you have, but like that's the kind of thing I think we should sit down and maybe. I'll throw together a document or something and we can have a separate meeting or we can do it in one of these meetings and kind of go through the ideas and see what, what, what the UI team or you and, and your team think about that and anybody else. Um, but I, like right now, the ta we've, we've only created a few little tasks, which is the in-package variant set and package variant viewers and then the editors. So the editors come in, uh, I guess that's, uh, the editors do come in here. So when I go here and um, let's say I have another one here that's a task, PBS example. You can see there's a package variant set here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I might have some tweaks on some of the formatting, but we'll just treat those as separate tickets. But this one looks pretty good. So then I'm gonna, I'm gonna clone this and I'm gonna deploy it directly to the management cluster. And so once I do this, you know, that's all great, but I can't actually see the results of that. Um, I can see the the, the, the package is here. Um, I can propose it. Kind of slow. Uh, I can approve it. And so what's happening now is it should be within a few minutes, the this resource will show up in my management cluster, but I don't have any way to see it with the UI. So I then have to go down to the CLI and a uh, do this and oh, that one's that one's from 12 hours ago so that's uh, a different one but it's going to have the same name so pretend that one came from the package I just I just did um, I okay. guess it'll probably lie on top of it but um. Then I can say get package variants. You'll see these are the package variants that were generated by that. So I'd uh -huh. love to be able to navigate this tree um, in the in the UI. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are we okay? All right. Um, and then, uh, and then these are the package revisions that were created by it, right? So I'd like to be able to navigate that tree. But then on top of so that, um, uh, we should see now these. Uh, well, uh, yeah, that, that's them, I think. Um, so we can we can kind of see them as they uh, the, the package revisions as they appear in here, but I, I can't you know um, I can't I can't see that they came from that package variant set. And then the other, the, the editor thing. So that's the that's the bigger picture. But if you look at the, the the current open issues, 
would be editors around. So now when I have a package variant set in a package, um, I'd love to be able to say, um, oh. okay, I screwed something up. Uh, let's just go back here. Um, I, I, I remember why that happened. I had like some name conflict or something, but, um, in here, uh, crap. All right, let's do that. I don't know, are you following what I'm what I'm saying? Because I'm kind of all over the place. Yeah, yeah, John. I follow. Up, uh, I am able to follow the tree structure that you're telling. But I think, okay. like you suggested, we have to uh, first document it and then like uh, try to see where we want this on the GUI. I do understand okay. from the backend side, like how we can refer to each other and like how we can create this tree. But from the okay. GUI perspective, I think uh, we definitely need to sit together to see how we could uh, make it more, uh, you know, beneficial for the GUI. Okay. okay. Right? That, that's so something then, I can so then, the, then the, so, okay, so that's the, sorry, I'm cutting you off. I, just trying to not take too much time. Um, the, the tree structure, that's a bigger thing. The next tasks on the list were editors for in-package variant and in-package variant set. So what I'm showing on the screen right now is a, a package that I've cloned that includes a package variant set. Uh -huh. And I click edit button and you get, you get an editor. So if you look at these, like um, that, that doesn't have an editor. So it just shows the YAML, but for config map, it has an editor. So you see a nice, a nice editor here and I can uh -huh. go and do this. So, right. Uh -huh. So right now, if I click on this, I'm going to see the YAML. So I can edit it and right? I can go and edit it with YAML, but it would sure be nice to have that you know that real ui yep. experience of being able to edit it this way um and so like like here one of the things in in package you know i would start with package variant because it's simpler than package variant set but would be and we're going to potentially use it later in our um in our thing so like um well anyway that, that's a different topic so so number 184 issue 184 would be to create a nice editor panel like this for the package variant resource. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you, one of the things in there is a pipeline. We already have an editor for that. So that you should be able to use directly. So, so that one might be a good, good place to start. So now I, what I was trying to show you with all of this talking was this is the, the panel we're talking about. Um, and we can go through and show you how to create a, um, a package that you can edit like that. Maybe, uh, anyway, I'll yeah. Stop there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I understand the editor because previously when we had our meeting with Chris, uh, mm -hmm. so he already showed us this editor page and how uh, this is needed. So I think the editor is a currently work in progress. So uh, we'll, we'll post okay. the screenshot soon. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. All right. Yes. You're already ahead yes. of me. Okay. Um, Cool. Well, then, is there anything else? Uh, oh, so the, so so you're working on this one. So should I put that in this sprint, or what do you want to? Uh, oh, I guess it's already marked as in progress. I thought package variant is already in progress. Package variant editor is already in progress. I already moved it. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Never mind. I'm I'm just I'm just behind the ball here. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Any other topics, or shall we wrap it up today? Yeah, as we were talking, John, just one thing. Uh, I just saw when we were talking, looking at the merged PRs and stuff like that, I, I saw the latest merge where the LGT behaviors changed. Uh, then I spoke to Victor and uh, Rado over the Slack channel on the chat when you were having the meeting. Looks like the behavior is slightly changed now. Uh, the way I understand, at least, Victor is here. It's good that he can uh, keep me honest or correct me here. Yes. Uh, so 
at this point of time, if you just do a LGTM, if there is no approval, it will not merge the code at this point of time. So as it stands, LGTM will not stand as an approval. So you need to have two explicit approval and then an LGTM to merge the code. So, so that's a great, that, that's good, that's useful. You should still use, so, so slash approve is subject to the owner's file. So basically like there's certain people in the owner's file, those are the people with authority to approve. And we can over time, like if, if Bala, you own some particular subsystem, you can have an owner's file in the directory for that subsystem and you can then approve anything in there. So um, the LGTM though, so, so we can say we need two approvals. You also, you might need 10 approvals because if you touch files in 10 different subsystems and those have 10 different owners, you might okay. need approvals from all those different people. I think there's, so, so then the LGTM is sort of a separate, like saying, okay, everything's ready to go. And so go ahead. It tells, Proud basically says, I need approvals. I guess to state it really simply, Proud says, I need an owner of every file that's changed to have approved that change. And I need an LGTM from anybody in the, any contributor. And so that's the logic that Prow is using. Um, so I still think it's, I guess it's, if you do an LGTM, what you're saying is once this has all the approvals of owners, then you can go ahead and merge it. So if you're not in the owner's file, then it's probably fine to do an LGTM any time you want. Um, I'm not sure because if uh, the way, uh, so Victor, is it, it, it was actually a PR by Victor and Merge by yeah. Ido. Uh -huh. uh, so, so I don't know, like uh, what, what I noticed is like, uh, I didn't have any ownership in the files. So previously when I, whenever that I do a, a GTM, the patch can merge like uh, without any approval at all. Like, uh, so I noticed that that was uh, default behavior in Pro. So, so that I just just include like a, that you have to have that approve uh, comment in order yeah. to get. So, I I agree with that change. Um, yeah. I think probably what was happening is that we also had it set up, and I think it must be the default in Pro where when somebody who is in the owner file submits a PR, it's automatically approved since they're the author. And so that, then, that is disabled, John. That is disabled now. That is disabled now. Right. So but but so what probably happened, Victor, is somebody submitted a PR that was the owner that was in the owner's file and then you LGTM'd it. And so it's considered to, you know, it was considered approved already and so it merged. That's my, my guess is that it looked, so it looked like your LGTM just approved it, but actually was already approved because the, the owner uh, automatically was marked as approved as the author. But now we, we have it so that if an owner submits a PR, it's not approved until they say slash approve, I believe. But you can't LGTM your own, your own things. You can approve them but not LGTM them. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so so maybe maybe we have. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting to 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 merge to to approve that change soon. So probably we can we can review it later. And maybe if that is necessary, we can revert back that particular change. So, so we, I think that change is yeah. fine. I think the, the the guidance still should be though. Generally, use slash approve unless you expect mm -hmm. your comment to merge it. I think should still be the guidance. Yeah, and also like I, I I would like to see more people like doing LGTM, but without that like a uh, pass pass forward like process like what we have what we were seeing before like I mean uh, just give it some exclusivity for for approvals like uh, I don't know like. <laughs> So basically, you are looking for uh, more reviews. Is that your intention? 
Yeah, well, I, I don't know if that was only to me, like, uh, but every time that I was just doing L LGTM to any, any, any PR, uh, yeah, th that was just uh, approved without any, any additional, like, uh, you got much. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, uh, it's a whole difference. Like, LGTM is more like a thumbs up, or like, <laughs> but approved. I don't know. Is the terminology is bad. I, I agree, but. We're we're a little bit stuck with it, like. Yeah, I think. So, uh, I think we will. The way I think thinking about it, John, is probably. Uh, we will know with this change when we merge next PR, we will know exact behavior. <laughs> uh, today, uh, maybe I think obviously we are planning to do. At least, uh, at least I I planning to do a couple of every every day I review a few PRs. So I'm pretty sure today, John, you also had some action items to leave you a few PRs, right? So we will know exact yeah. behavior today. Uh, yeah. with this, yeah, uh, must, yeah. what, what is changed? Try, right, try well, let's watch it and see if we want to change it. But but right now, I think it's set up. Like the question is, do we want to come up with our own own way to do it? Or do we, we're right now we're following the way Kubernetes does it. So yeah, we want to follow what Kubernetes does it, unless we are okay. deviating too much. I mean, that's what I think, because I used to follow what OpenStack does. OpenStack, you can actually have plus ones. You can have as many number of plus ones as you want. But two plus twos from the core reviewers was the one that was actually going to merge. You needed two plus twos. I know. So, and yeah. that makes more sense to me, but that's for, for, for some reason not how it's done in Kubernetes. And yeah, I mean, I'm just only looking for an equivalent of it. We have to subscribe to the and value was it system. Using, and, uh, uh, was it using Garrett? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think I I remember using get it using using those kind of conventions. I don't think GitHub does that convention. I mean, I, I, I'm just looking for equivalent. That's all. In the sense, that's all it is. Because yeah, uh, the, the, even the, core the, reviewers, even if you're the owner, John could actually go look at it. He will give his plus one, but he looks for a bunch of plus ones before he does a plus two. He will go. He can go back later and make a plus two, and two yeah, owners they, have to do the plus. How doesn't do that? Yeah. So, so yeah. that's the equivalent, right? We have the equivalent. Our approve is plus one. Approve does not merge. Any number of approves does not merge unless there's no, no, no. Uh, But I guess like a, a LGTM is plus one and approve is, is plus two. I mean, if we try to make that analogy between. That's not that's not how it is, though. That's not how Pro works. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. It's closer to the other way around. It's closer to approve is, is plus okay. one, but you have to get plus ones from all the right people. And then a LGTM is plus two. And LGTM can be from anyone, as I found out here, here today. And, and LGTM can be from anyone. It's, it's not no, as, I, 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 actually, Liam, it's, just it's to. It's not as, as good yeah. as what we did back in OpenStack, but, um, for, but like, unless we want to. But this yeah, is what's right. We're following the way Kubernetes does it. Uh, once, once it's once we know uh, once we know what you're doing, what, what they mean is fine. I think. Yeah. yeah. To be to be honest, to be honest, Liam, I think what you did was absolutely correct because it already had an approval yeah. from Vim. Vim had already. Yeah, approved I approved it. it. I approved yeah. it. So I yeah. don't think if I if I would have not approved it, it would not have been worse. I think. Yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah. No, no. I I was just but I was just actually taking a look at it and. Just, and it, this looks sensible to me is all I meant to say. So. Yeah, yeah, I know. I sometimes mm -hmm. use LGTM without the slash to do exactly that. Well, you can mm -hmm. literally do a plus one. The, yeah. the other thing to note is, is that the LGTM, when if somebody pushes new commits, the LGTM will be removed, but the slash approves will not. So the assumption here is there's an assumption of trust that, that once you have an approve, you're not going to make such dramatic changes. It's going to be small things like, you know, tweak mm -hmm. this here, fix that CI failure. And so, the LGTM is a check on that. But the approval, I think the thinking was, and I don't know, but I, I suspect the thinking was the slash approve is there's people who might be like, they're like those core reviewers and they might be really busy reviewing lots of different PRs. Once they give their approval, it's approved, and if there are minor issues that need to be sorted out, the LGTM done by a trusted person, because they have to be in the a contributor in order to, to do it, um, it, is sufficient. So that, I think that's the, the philosophy behind it. So at some part of time, can we actually have like a, in one of the SIG automation or the release meetings where we have more people in attendance, 
uh, and were reviewing at least to walk through i mean today i came to know about this yeah you know at least a five minute thing i mean we can work with yeah. somebody come up with a matrix or something and say if you do this this is what is going to happen you know some yeah yeah, yeah that's a good idea why don't we can you put that on the agenda for the sig automation meeting and we'll try and get to it okay okay thank you i'll do that yeah yeah i mean uh, my goal is still i mean in the sense i want our community to grow i want our community to be seen as very friendly to any newbies who can contribute to uh and we want to like you know encourage folks reviewing prs uh and you know i mean all they do is probably they go pull the pr they run a test on their dev in my mind they start getting familiar that is how they'll actually become more familiar uh is what i believe uh, it, that is my at least my i want to advocate that you know i want to influence yeah. you guys also <laughs> I, I think Vish, we'll, we're going to want maybe it's going to be posted or one, but we're going to want like a contributor guide that says, "Hey, you want to you want to mod, you know, you want to make a change or you want to review a change. Here's mm-hmm. how you do it, you know, for management cluster items. Here's how you do it for workload cluster items. Here's how you do it for the UI, right? Like, and, and kind of have guides for how people can first do what you just said, pull a PR." and 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 try it in their environment you know right. and second actually you know make changes there's there's quite a bit of work to do there to to like document all that and yeah yeah it. i mean we can ask those newbies to do that too we can seed the document initially and then do that right so that's the way to do yeah. it to get them because more people feel accomplished uh, when they see that i mean in open stack if you remember you have stackalytics so yeah. it was actually capturing somebody's contribution i mean i can tell you this the first three months what i was doing was pulling prs and doing plus ones after i understood in some cases i did not understand i used to ask questions i did not contribute anything material you see right. uh, it, it takes time to come up to yeah. speed so we yeah. want to make sure that we are accommodating that uh, that's all that is my so, so on that that met, like this is not really a topic for this meeting but the there is a There's something the CNCF has something called DevStack, or not DevStack. Mm-hmm. Sorry, DevStack. I mean, OpenStack is something called um, DevStats. Um, DevStats, mm-hmm. which is like Stackalytics, right? So DevStats is uh, if you go to DevStats.cncf.io, I think it is, you'll see a bazillion things. Now we don't get that for free, mm-hmm. but I do have a, um, but they, you know, it is all open source, of course. And so um, you can here I can share. Well, if we want this kind of a uh, matrix, I, I think that we can use a Gitergia cloud solution. So yeah, we well, what I'm saying is we we can we can do it. However, you know, whatever we think is the right way to do it. CNCF does this. I think Tal had suggested some other ones that that open that Linux Foundation has. So like in this one. You know, you can drill into Kubernetes, and then you can see in this Profana dashboard all sorts of, all sorts of stuff, right? Um, oh, I see. And then, right. So these are all broken down. These are the individuals. This is broken down by company. This is how many PRs people have opened, and you know, like, right? It's it's ridiculous. Mm. Um, but Uh, so we can run an instance of this if we if we want to, um, or we can do a different me- means of, of doing it. But this all is based on GitHub statistics, and they've got a whole process for how they pull those down and and, and all of that stuff. So yeah. anyway, at some point of time, yes, we just slowly try to evolve ourselves. I mean, I I, I the goal is. just to make it very easy for anybody to come in contribute to nephew and how yeah. easy do we make it that's the thing i think everybody has got that intention <laughs> i want to try to see how we can actually try to make that happen you know how we can demonstrate that hey look you can join nephew you is a easy one where you can contribute you'll feel accomplished you know that's right. that's the way i think maybe i am thinking i'm d- dreaming but basically uh, that's, no, that's, that's, that's right which i think I hope we get I think what what we what you alluded to was probably we need a developer guide we have in this particular release we have plans for user guide and install guide but what you're alluding is mostly we'll need a developer guide which will do in the 
R2 time frame. Yeah, that, that uh, this post so, there's, so there's, um, so yeah, Victor, you know, I would ask SIG release to figure out that tooling. So um, whatever, I'm sorry, okay. I, I got distracted.